Hello, everybody. Green Effect Podcast, Season 4, Episode 20, live on the air. So, this is a completely different podcast um, because uh, I'm actually doing this live completely on uh, both YouTube and a special link that I put up on uh, social media. So I'm kind of taking this whole podcast thing to the next level. So if you see my head kind of pivot and kind of go back and forth, I'm watching like multiple screens, <laughs> totally crazy. So if you're only listening to the podcast, keep listening on your favorite podcatcher. I love it. Uh, but take some time to actually have a look at some of the live video stuff. Like we've been doing video for a while, but now I'm kind of trying it a little bit differently where, listen, I, for those of you who don't know, when I do this podcast, I don't do like 50,000 takes. Even when get, when guests come in, I don't uh, tell them we're going to edit and tweak and stop. Like, no, we just go. So I figure since I'm doing this kind of live anyway, why not try it out? Like it's, um, it's actually, uh, it's actually pretty interesting. Uh, anyway, so I, I'm watching multiple screens. I'm watching myself on one side on YouTube. And I'm watching my other side here on um, on this the special link that I put up on Instagram. So I'm totally watching. In fact, I'm I'm looking at the YouTube one. I don't even know if it's actually broadcasting properly. It might not actually be, to be honest with you. Like uh, I'm looking for this one particular setting here right now. Give me one sec. Let me see if I can figure this out. I think I'm actually unlisted right now. Oh, I am. Okay, let's go public. Boom. Now I'm actually, I think, public on YouTube. So for example, there's something I'm learning right there. I didn't realize that. I gotta click a button to go public on YouTube. I might not have anybody on YouTube watching because I didn't really advertise it, but this is what I like to do. And listen, this podcast, you know, we talk a lot about business. We talk about mortgages and all that other stuff, but we also, as a business owner, I, I try new things and, and, and I want to see, I, I like to push the envelope. Anyone on my team knows that I'm always kind of pushing the envelope and trying things. And that's how you succeed at business, really, right? So anyway, so if you see me on some of those uh, platforms, make sure you say hello, or I'm not even monitoring the chat, to be honest with you. So I don't know, we'll see what happens. All right. Listen, let's get into uh, into the actual uh, meat and potatoes here. I missed last week. So I have now missed last week and then I missed Canada Day long weekend doing a podcast. And like, I'll be honest with you, uh, I've been really, really busy. And, you know, knock on wood, uh, I'm, I'm kind of lucky because I've got some incredible clients. I've got some incredible partners that I work with. And a lot, a lot of the hard work is is paying off. Like, let's just call this what it is, right? And I, I don't hide behind that. I don't, I don't, I'm not shy about it from the standpoint that I'm pretty proud of, of what has gone on. So um, I love helping clients. But with that being said, where the last couple of weeks has been just crazy, crazy busy. Like what does busy mean maybe is the question here. And the answer to that is I've just had some really complex applications, like some really complex apps. And, you know, it's one of those things where I think that that's arguably what makes me really successful is the ability to take a really complex file and try to break it down and try to get it approved and, and, you know, go into those challenging situations. And, you know, that's really what I've run into. And, and I think, the one, the, the few things that have really, I think, slowed me down or made me busy, we'll say, are appraisals. <laughs> so a combination of appraisals and the fact that people are actually putting in conditions now. So back when, you know, 2021, 2022, everyone just went firm on everything. My job was actually pretty easy because, you know, and any good mortgage broker or agent will tell you, you can't tell a client, oh, just go firm, knock yourself out. We'll just approve whatever you buy. It's not how it works. You know, so you give the client warning, you, you help them as much as possible. You, you explain to them the risk. Are they a high risk, a medium risk, a low risk or whatever? And, um, you know, if they choose to go firm, they go firm, you, you know, knock on wood. I've never really had a situation where I told a client, you know, you're a low risk and something went sideways. And it's first time for everything, but not yet. And um, so in this case, when there's conditions in, I got to get things done quick and on time, which means I got to push underwriters to go faster, appraisers to go faster, which is fine because we have great partnerships. It's a little more stressful. And then when you have an appraiser who doesn't quite know what he or she may be doing, okay, or something weird comes back on the appraisal or there's weird zoning and that's what drags your time down big time, right? And 
And listen, the one thing I noticed right now, if we're talking about a bit of a market update, I noticed clients are really looking for a deal, kind of that unicorn out there that, you know, maybe it's, uh, it's not perfect. Uh, it doesn't have a perfect basement. It needs updates or newly renovated, but there's still some hiccups or, you know, there, there might be some, some issues with the property or whatever. So a lot of clients are looking for those deals right now. And, you know, it's just, it's fine. It's just, you got to make sure you manage expectations and clients have to understand, you know, I'm not the appraiser really. I, I am, I'm a agent. I go between you and the lender. And then I really facilitate the communication between everybody. So it's, it's not up to me whether or not there's an issue with the property or whether or not the lender likes or doesn't like it. But it, it also comes down to me for how I present it to the lender, right? So anyway, dealing a lot with that right now where we've just got some kind of tricky, just some really tricky applications, right? Um, yeah, so sorry, I was just looking at, I was looking at one of my streaming, my streaming links here. I'm not even, again, I'm pretty sure it's working, but... Who the heck knows? I guess we'll find out soon. <laughs> if nobody joins this thing and I'm just kind of doing this for, you know, for lack of a better term, kind of, am I allowed to swear? Can I swear in a live feed? I don't know if I can swear in a live feed. Am I allowed to do that? I don't even know. But anyway, whatever. I won't swear just for now. I'm still going to mark this explicit, but I'm not going to swear just for now. Okay. All right. So before I get into some more of a market update, I just want to mention we have next week, we have an incredible podcast coming up. All right. I've got two folks that, again, I'm probably going to completely lose control of the podcast because they are incredible guests. One is going to be Madeline Towns. And Madeline is, uh, in my humble opinion, I've never met her in person, but I kind of know her because of her social media persona. And we're going to talk about that. So Madeline Towns is a great realtor with, I don't know which office, but she's Remax out of Hamilton, I believe it is. And I first kind of got to know her a little bit from her social media. And then I mentioned her in a podcast with another guest and she, uh, so I mentioned her, I, I tagged her in the social media post, added her as a collaborator. She was all excited about it. I said, you know what? Like your social media is pretty unique. I said, would you like to be a guest on the podcast? And she's like, sure. And then of course I asked Lacey Morrison, one of my social media friends, Hey, do you want to come on this podcast? It would be like the three of us. Right. And she's like, yeah, of course I would. Next week's podcast, so episode 21, it's going to be Madeline Towns, Lacey Morrison, and myself talking about real estate, talking about what Madeline sees in the industry, talking about social media trends. There's going to be some really cool things in there. So um, if you want to have a look at Madeline's uh, Instagram, all right, she is Madeline, spelled M-A-D-E-L-Y-N, but also check out her TikTok. And I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to fire in there and just get her TikTok for you because it's kind of, they're very different. So, so her, sorry, I'm a guy. I can't do more than one thing at a time here. Uh, so I think, is it right here? Probably not, but let's give it a, yep, yeah, here it is. So, uh, so under her, uh, under her TikTok, it's, so it's her full name. So Madeline, M-A-D-E, well, geez, I can't even say this properly. M-A-D-E-L-Y-N. T-O-W-N-E-S, Madeline Towns, spelt, um, there's an E in Towns and then Madeline's with a Y. And so, so anyway, so, so the reason why I think she's pretty cool and the reason why I would have her on the, on the podcast is her, her TikTok videos are a lot longer, but they kind of tell a story and she's pretty real about stuff. Like she, she kind of, again, I don't know if I can swear on this, but she kind of calls bullshit if she needs to. So I like that. Right. I, I like real. And, and we're going to talk about this on our podcast next week. Social media has got to be real. If you've noticed, my social media has changed a little bit. OK, and uh, we're going to talk a lot about that because we want to talk about the real estate market. We want to talk about realtors, mortgage brokers. I've got a really funny story to talk with her about. But we're going to talk about the about keeping it real on social media. OK, that's next week. That's Madeline Towns. All right. Moving on back. If I can find the right damn window to look at. Uh, let's go right here. OK. So let's, let's go to the, let's go market. I want to continue on with the market conversation. So here's what's going down with the market. All right. And I got some numbers I want to float to you. We're going to get into inflation in a moment. All right. And then we're going to talk about Bank of Canada predictions. So right now we've got more months of inventory that's been hanging around for a longer period than we've seen in a very, very long time. Okay. Very, very long time. So for example, and I don't, I don't have it up in front of me, it doesn't really matter, but oh, Tri-City, so Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge, London, St. Thomas, everyone's over three months of inventory. Now I've said this before where, listen, 
technically speaking, one to three months of inventory is generally a, a buyer, uh, sorry, a, a seller's market, okay? Historically, not in the last four or five years, but historically. One to three months of inventory is a seller's market, which means there's very relatively low inventory. Three to five months of inventory is a balanced market. Anything more than five is a buyer's market because there's too much inventory. Now, just to recap, months of inventory basically means if we stopped listing homes today on the board, how long would it take to sell out whatever is on the board? Okay, so months of inventory is a very, very key indicator. All right, so we're like three-ish, but What's more important about this is we're, we've been consistently three-ish for the last couple of months. It's a big change, right? And I've said this earlier where I've got deals going on. They've all got conditions, right? Like a, a buyer's market in the world we're in today starts at two and a half months of inventory because it's so, it's so, um, what's the right word I'm looking for? It's so acute. Like there's so many buyers on the sidelines and there's so high and there's such high immigration and stuff like that. So we're seeing a lot of a lot of offers with conditions because it's basically a buyer's market. I had a I had an offer come in today and I don't know, had like eight conditions. It was insane, right? We're definitely seeing that right now. And it's um it's it's changing the market. But I will say this, I don't think that's going to last much longer. And, and let me explain why I think we're just in a moment of time here. I'm just going to sip my coffee first. All right. So the reason why I don't think this is going to last too long, a, a few different reasons. Let me back this up with some statistics. Where do I start with all the damn statistics? I got a lot of statistics here. So first thing is immigration. All right. This, this is a train that's just not slowing down. The, the immigration is not slowing down. We have statistics to back up the fact that probably our, our largest, uh, the country that provides the largest number of immigrants right now to Canada is India. No, there's no, there's no surprise there. Okay. And a lot of these folks are coming in for the colleges, the, unfortunately they call them the uh, diploma mills. Okay. Uh, there was a, there was a, a really sad marketplace. Was it marketplace or uh, one of the CBC specials talking about what's happening with folks that come in in particular from India and how they're sold just a bill of goods, right? And this is going to continue. I, I can't see the government following through on their commitment to slow down Indian or immigrants from India immigrating to Canada. There's a little bit of redundancy there, but um, I can't see that slowing down. There's a commitment. I don't think it's going to happen. I really don't, right? Not with an election coming, not with an election coming. So if we constantly have this immigration that just will not slow down, the demand is going to be there. It's slowed down for now, but that demand's going to be there. Then let's just then add in the fact that we're probably going to go into a, a quantitative easing cycle from the Bank of Canada. So to be clear what that means, he's probably going to start to drop rates. He already did once, right? He's going to drop rates a little bit. And he dropped a quarter percent last month. He's going to announce this month his new one. We're going to talk about that in a moment. But by and large, we're, I've already said this, we're going to need a, I think we need a full percent drop to really move the dial. It's coming. It's coming. So we have record immigration. We have this month of inventory thing, which historically three months is really still a seller's market. And then you throw on top of that the fact that rates are going to start to come down. And let me give you one more, more number to support my hypothesis. Never good at science, but I know what hypothesis means. And we also have government, uh, five-year government bonds in general. And five-year government bond is kind of the, the yardstick we all use. That has come down in general. Remember, bond prices is what feeds the fixed rate mortgage market. The decision that Tiffy Boy make a bank, uh, makes a Bank of Canada is, is linked to the prime lending rate. Very different. They are mutually exclusive, whereby his choices may impact the bond market. So we're seeing those rates now start to come down a little bit more. So I think once we have the fuel for the fire to be rates decreasing, combined with record immigration not slowing down, and there's actually stuff to buy now, once people get ramped up, I think, think stuff's going to move. And we have every single prediction to say, based on the fact that, if I can link in one more stat, single family homes, the permits are non-existent. They're just non-existent. There's no one building single family homes. If they are, it's minor. Throw that onto the fire and the fact that in a year or two, we're not going to have very many single family homes to be bought. It's going to be a commodity. You're going to have a single family home. You're gonna be like a king or queen, man, because you got a single family home. Nobody else has that. That's pretty big. Condos are, we, we have stats on condos. 
there's definitely housing starts on condos and rentals have increased one mainly because of the cmh cmhc mli program that really really lends itself to help people buy or to build those multi-residential properties but you know, if we're talking just the regular family and single family homes, there's not going to be a lot out there. So if we take all those statistics and put them together, the, I think this three months of inventory is kind of slower type thing is just the tip of the iceberg. Then you throw in the fact that all these billions of dollars in mortgages or trillions or whatever the hell it is, all these mortgages coming up for renewal in the next few years, that's going to fuel it too. Because I think people are going to be wanting to downsize. When rates come down and their mortgage is mortgage up for renewal, they're going to want to make a bit of a move. Nothing wrong with that. Put that whole puzzle together that I just broke down for you. I don't think we're going to be slow like this for much longer. I just don't. And then we can throw in some other things too. Every prediction right now is that condos are also going to be a hot commodity because they're not building any condos. We've got way too many. It's like we can't find a balance, right? So I look at this and I'm like, man, what the hell is going to happen, right? It's going to be, I still think it's going to be a situation where things have to balance out. And that might mean really this up and down next couple of years where all of a sudden it's busy. Now it's not busy now it's not it's busy 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 for a few months now it's not for a few months i think it's going to be this kind of roller coaster of you know what we're coming down to coming to the end of a busy month or two now is the time to take vacation like it's just it's just gonna be this weird time but anyway we'll see what happens now let's talk about tiffy boy and his band of merry men as i like to call you know what i like i don't know what her name is i'm so sorry but i think she's a deputy governor What's her name? She, oh, what's her, okay, I'm gonna, um, okay, look her up, okay, but she's the lady that's always sitting right beside Tiff Macklin. I can't remember her name. I'm sorry, I've drawn a complete blank. Let me look it up. I feel horrible. Bank of Canada. Oh, who is this nice lady? Is it Carolyn something? Might be Carolyn something. Sugar. Let me see if I can find it. Anyway, I believe she's the, de if you look at any picture, Bank of Canada, I think it's Carolyn something. She seems really nice, and she doesn't seem to take a lot of crap from people. I'm only mentioning this because she's been, been kind of in the background. And my comment here is, I mean, we got Disney Plus lady. Uh, the rumor is she's out. I, I think Trudeau is actually going to shuffle his cabinet this week. And the rumor is Disney Plus lady Christia Freeland is out. And see ya. Good riddance. <laughs> like, goodbye. She's horrible. And, and, and not only because I guess of her, of what she's done or her political whatever, but She's not very good in the public eye. <laughs> like, there, there's more, I don't know. She's not, whoever vetted her for public consumption should lose their job with her. Like, she's not well-spoken. Carolyn Rogers, I think it is. I might be wrong. Someone correct me. I believe it's Carolyn Rogers is the deputy, a deputy Bank, of, Bank of Canada governor. I think I'm right there. If I'm wrong, let me know. But she seems really good. She would be a really good... Finance minister. I'm only basing that on how she talks. She might not, I don't even know anything about her, but she just seems to just take any shit from people, which I, which I think is pretty cool, to be honest with you. Anyway, where was I going with this whole point? It always ends up in a rant against Disney Plus Lady Man. Like, seriously? And it just feels good. So, whatever. All right. A bank, sorry, Bank of Canada prediction. Okay. So here's the dealio. Everything is, everything he wanted, he got. Let me explain, because I, I still got to talk about inflation. The inflation report completely connects with the Bank of Canada prediction. So I've said this many times before that when we're looking at inflation, CPI, the competi uh, competition, composition of CPI, we have to strip away mortgage interest. That is a battle that we are never going to win, at least for the next couple of years. So one component of inflation is what is the increase on um, the increase on and I, people have corrected me on this term, but you know what I'm talking about. The increase in inflation uh, as, a, as a component of mortgage interest. Or is it the other way around? Anyway, you know what I mean. So if we strip that away, and I'm going to give some numbers here. And I'm looking at a graph without an exact number, but you'll get the picture. So in April, mortgage interest cost alone accounted for almost a full percent of inflation. May, uh, almost one and a half percent. And in June, it was almost one and a half percent. So, for example, in June, CPI inflation was 2.7. Uh, 
sorry, I'm reading off a graph here as opposed to the exact number. Uh, let me just get this. Yeah, so it was 2.7%, okay, in June. Important to note, because I, I like to make sure I'm, I'm setting this expectation, year over year, CPI grew, a okay, consumer price index grew year over year, but month to month, which is what more people look at because that's more current, it decreased. So from 2.9 to 2.7 was month over month. And then year over year, uh, I believe it was, I might be wrong. Please fact check me if I'm wrong on this. Uh, it actually increased a little bit year over year. I think it was by 0.1 or something like that. But everyone's looking at the month to month, okay? So 2.7% in June. Of that, I'm just doing some math on my screen, 1.4% was everything but mortgage interest. So some quick math, 2.7 minus 1.4, 1.3. So 1.3% was mortgage interest only. Tiffy Boy and everyone else knows, we're not gonna control this mortgage interest thing. We're just not, right? It's just something that's gonna happen. Unless he keeps dropping rates, there's no way for that to slow down, right? We all know that, okay? So. This is gonna be something that's gonna to continue to increase inflation. But if we look at just the standard, everything else other than mortgage interest, which is not controllable anymore, we're at 1.3%. So I think he's gonna take that. The fact that the jobs report was worse than expected, fantastic. Whoever thought we'd be celebrating unemployment, okay? Because that's what he needs. He needs more unemployment because that means businesses aren't spending money, which also means that customers aren't spending money, consumers aren't spending money. So therefore the economy is slowing way high level, but you understand what I'm saying. So what do I think is going to happen? I think, and this is going to get released the day before his announcement. Okay. The day before, I think he's going to drop one more time, quarter percent, baby steps, man. We are baby stepping through this recovery. Okay. I don't think we're going to see anything crazy. I don't think we're going to see, some people are saying, oh my God, half a percent. I don't freaking think so. Right. I may be wrong, but He's still, he is still accounting for two huge screw ups on his part. One was the, was the announcement to go spend your brains out because rates are going to be long or going to be low for a long time. And the other one was waiting too long to increase rates. I don't think he's got a misstep left in him. He's going to take this slow. He's going to err on the side of caution or what's the right word? Make it, make it worse on the side of caution. You know what I mean? but I think it's going to go super slow and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So, so that's what I think we're going to see. I think we're going to see a quarter percent. Up. Now, if he says we're not changing rates at all, I actually think that's what he has to do. The right, and this is going to sound crazy, the right thing for him to do right now is not drop rates. Leave it one more month. I want to be real clear. What I think he's going to do and what I think he has to do are two very different things. I think he's got it. He should leave it alone. And the reason for that is he doesn't, things are correcting. It sucks. Things suck right now. I get it. But that's what has to happen to correct this mess. So I think he needs to stay where he's at. I think he's going to give everyone a quarter percent again. I don't know. What do you think? Love to hear in the comments. Up, down, you only got two or three days here to make a prediction, but I think that's what you need to consider, right? That's what he needs to consider. Do I do the right thing? If he grows a set, okay, and makes up for the other two screw-ups, he won't change the rates in July. But I don't think that's what we're going to see from him. I just don't, right? We got other we got other issues too around, he does anyway. You know, our, our Canadian dollar is going to become a bloody peso pretty soon against the, the American dollar, right? I don't want to go too much into that right now, but if he keeps dropping rates, our dollar is going to weaken against the American dollar. And that's, that's a whole other podcast. I really have to find an economist to come on and explain all that. I know how it works, but not, I couldn't explain it properly. Like you guys would think I'm an idiot. If you don't already, already, if you don't already, anyway. Okay. What else? You know what? Oh man, we're at half an hour. Damn. What else did I want to talk about today? Oh, the gas, the appraisal, the inflation. Oh, okay. Hey, you know what? Let's, let's just take a minute to talk about this. So, you know, because again, the, the title of this podcast really is Finance, Life, and Business. So I just wanted to share this because as you guys know, I'm self-employed. I'm a mortgage agent and, and the whole bit. And I have assistants and I have team and, and the whole bit. And I will make this comment. If you're a business owner, and I, I've done this, I've done this before, Okay where I've taken a business, you know, when I was with RBC, right? And, and one thing, you know what, when I left RBC, there was no, nothing bad, nothing, you know, I didn't get chased out. I, I wasn't unhappy. I just, time for a change. That's all it was. RBC was incredible to me. I had, I had, I had probably some of the 
best managerial experiences or as an employee to to a manager that I've had in my whole career. I've had some great managers. Like I've some I've had some really good managers. Um and they were out there they're on that list. And I think what they allowed is they really allowed you to run a business, which is fantastic, right? You you want to be if if you are in sales, you want to be working with folks that are truly entrepreneurial. Okay. And and you know being an RBC mortgage specialist at the time definitely that it, it would allow you to be entrepreneurial under a label under a brand okay so when i moved on my own what really excited me is is listen guys let's call call me what i am i'm not real good at following instructions right i am the typical i did a myers-briggs um evaluation thing it's like a personality test years ago and my person i never forgot this my personality is if it ain't broke let's break it and yep that's me all right if it ain't broke let's freaking break it because I like to explore, I like to learn, and I also like to learn from my own mistakes. Unfortunately, my daughter has also in inherited that. One would say, uh, I would say gift, others would say stubbornness, but to each their own. So, you know, the one thing I would say as a business owner that when I was with my, when I was in my, my previous role, I waited too long to scale and to hire assistance and to hire help. I remember when I first got my first assistant, I think in 2015 or 2016, incredible lady, her name was Pat, and I hired her part-time. And it was like a breath of fresh air because I had somebody that could support me to help grow my business, continue to help grow my business. Then I went from a part-time to a full-time, and now here I am on my own. I have two two individuals that are that are kind of they're part-time, they do different functions, their jobs just split up. But I will say in the broker channel, believe it or not, there's a lot less paperwork and other things to have to deal with. Than when you are with a bank, right? So it's a little bit different that way. But regardless, uh, the reason why I've started this is, you know, started this conversation is if you're a business owner, I'm now going through this again. Don't be afraid to scale. Don't be afraid to take risks. I'm, I'm, I'm about to take another big risk in my business. I'm gonna, I have, I have two incredible assistants right now. I'm taking a risk where I'm hiring another assistant, uh, not to do the same what they do, the existing, but. I'm now bogged down with a lot of administrative items that I need to have someone else help me with, right? There's no way you can't grow your business if you keep just doing all the same work and it keeps growing up, growing on you. I, I was talking to my wife about this, who I don't spend as much time with. Like, I look at that part. I don't spend as much time with my wife right now because I'm always doing this this job, right? This, this business. I look at me last week. I didn't do the podcast, right? I missed, I missed the episode. I, I was tired. I was exhausted. I slept so much this week for like three hours a night. So I say it that way because it's like when I crashed, I crashed and I had to go again. I slept so much, but that three or four hours I got to sleep, that's all I got, right? And so, you know, it's one of those things where when you're a business owner, you have to be successful business owners are business owners that take risks. Think about that for a second. Anyone who's in business knows you got to take a risk. If you're going to grow your business, you're going you're to meet your goals. You got to take some risks and I'm doing that right now. Okay? So if you're a business owner out there, listen, don't be afraid to scale. Don't be afraid to grow. Don't be afraid to take that risk. You are a business owner because you're different than everyone else anyway, right? You're not afraid to take those risks. I mean, I've taken, I've taken risks, you know, calculated risks. I'm not, you know, jumping off buildings, but yeah, but you know, it, it's, I haven't been afraid to hire people, but it's scary. It is so scary when it happens, like huge scary. Right. So anyway, we'll see how it all goes. I just wanted to share that if you're a business owner, man, don't be afraid to scale. It just, you can't. All right. It's how you grow and it's why you're different and special than everyone else. That's what I tell myself. All right. That's it. That's enough. We've gotten through all the stuff. All right. So don't forget, listen to the next week's podcast. Madeline and Lacey are going to be on with me. Um, I'm sure just like when Lacey was on alone with me on the podcast, it'll be a complete shit show, uh, but there'll be a lot of really cool stuff to talk about. All right. Anyway, until next time, I hope this live thing went okay. Uh, I hope no one's mad at me online. I'm not even reading the comments. I think there might be some chat comments in there, but I'm not reading them, so whatever. All right, as you know how we always end all of our shows, keep fit, have fun. Remember, five-star reviews. Let's take anything else. Five stars, okay? On Apple Podcasts, social media, just give me five stars on everything, man. So if you listen to this podcast, you should be giving me five stars. Like, what are we even talking about? All right, get lost. Talk to you soon.